Last episode, we built a fleet of vehicles and completed our construction yards to act as our base of operations for our new mega city project. This episode, we're going to be mapping out some roads, building some farms. But first off, I need to get rid of this hill or at least flatten it a little bit more. There we go, that's better. We've flattened the top of that off. Absolutely wonderful. So the main aim for today is to build ourselves a farm and of course disguise it as something that will fit in with this city and maybe even upgrade our Swift Sneak because although I've got Swift Sneak 1, it, it doesn't really feel that different. I, I think we're going to have to go back to another ancient city, but we'll deal with that later. First up, what I want to do is map out some of the roads we've got going on here and figure out how we're going to lay out certain parts of the city because if we look from above, in fact, I probably would be better off in free cam instead of flying around so we can actually have a proper look there we go that's better so if we have a look at this we've actually got two different islands and we're going to need to put some kind of road network across these islands that works with the city and has all the buildings in and i'm thinking like a main sort of circular route with lots of streets that come off is going to be the best port of call and that means that this bit here is pretty much going to be on a main road which means it needs to be a big road and that's what we're going to be working on today we're going to try and get some road in we're probably even going to map out a little bit there's going to be bridges going across here at some point in future but that's a way off yet but i think getting a main road in down here is going to be good and i was going to do the main road as five wide and five wide so it's you know quite a wide road here but when you actually fly back on the grand scale of things i don't think that's going to be wide enough for a main road so we're actually going to make this a little bit bigger and we're going to have each side of the road seven blocks wide and that's how wide the main road's going to be that's going to sort of as i say loop around the whole city so i'm going to get started here we're going to be using deep slate cobble as the sort of main block for the road but we also need to make sure we get all the gutters and curbs and things in as well before we get all these down and before we can even do that i need to actually dig out where the road's going to be so i, I, I guess Digging is where it begins, isn't it? Well, I've got the first little bit of the road in. As you can see, that's going to be the sort of general size for the road that's going to kind of loop around the island. And this bit here is actually going to go into a bridge and go across. So I've not lowered it down to follow the terrain on this side. However, over here, I have lowered it down and it's going to kind of swoop down to the coast over this side and then loop round over here. That's if it even does a full loop. I might actually do it as just a big sort of U shape. Who knows? But for now, what we've got is a big area here where we can build and a big path, a big road that needs a bit of texture. And I need to go get myself a bit more diorite as well, just to sort of mark out some more road markings on this smaller road. But progress is being made. I do, however, need to change this bit over here somewhere. I need to put in an entrance onto the building that's going to be over here because, well, we can't have a construction yard without actually having something being constructed. So that's what this area here is going to be. This is going to be the building site itself. So we've got our yard over there. This will be our site. And the very first farm is going to be going over here as well. But first, I think I want to get this road looking a bit better. But what I'm going to do to get some detail into this road is essentially put some sort of darker patches in as if there's been like oil spills and things like that. And we're going to try something like this. So we'll start with a few of those. Then around that black stone, we'll put some of this black stone. And then we'll put some of the darker deep slate. Hopefully this is going to look okay. I don't know how it's going to look up close, but at least from a distance it should look good, right? But we'll mix in a few different bits of the deep slate around here. We'll try the basalt. I think the basalt should work quite well. Maybe if we get a piece like that. So that puts a bit of a stain on the road. Uh, let's see how that looks from a distance. It should look all right. Oof, I tell you what, it might be a little bit too dark in the middle there. Hmm, I wonder. So let's maybe try it without the pure black stone and have a look at that. Yeah, I think that works a lot better for me. I definitely prefer that. Although I think I want it to be a lot smaller. I like the tone and the coloration, but let's see if we can just shrink this down a little bit so the dark patch is just a few blocks on the side of the road as opposed to taking over the whole road like it is at the moment. Yeah, there we go. That's much better. Excellent. So we're going to have a few patches like that scattered around. And the other thing we're going to do is just mix in some of the different types of deep slates. So we're going to have like a few sort of lighter patches here and there as well. And that should hopefully just help break up the road a little bit. Let's see what happens. 
All right, that's looking pretty good. I think that's come along well. We've got these little mud tracks that are going between the two sites because, well, all the heavy machinery is going to be leaving them. We've got some damaged bits of road. And overall, I don't think we've gone too over the top. I think that should work quite nicely. Just a few patches here around the building sites. And the road will probably be a bit cleaner as we get further away from this area. But for this, I think it works well. And that puts us in a good position to start the build over here, where we're going to be making a tree farm. And I know we already have a tree farm, but that farm only does mangrove. And as much as we love mangrove, it's definitely time to switch it up a little bit and get a versatile tree farm in here that can actually deal with a whole lot more things. I can't even remember the list of things it can do because it's not even just trees. In fact, that list is probably up on screen for you now. So as you can see, it's going to be a very, very useful farm. It's by Ian. X04 and I'm gonna go get all the bits and bobs I need to get that built up and I'll build that up in a very quick time lapse and then just explain how it works but if you do want to know how to build the farm yourself I highly recommend checking out Ian X04's video which I'll link in the description. just like that the farm is complete look at that it's such a simple thing i absolutely love it and if we flick this lever here things should start exploding hopefully hopefully in the right place here it comes look at that beautiful get that turned off for now that is extremely loud so this farm is actually really good for lots of things so we can actually get all of these different types of wood although we can do oak we're actually better off using azalea and not actually doing oak whatsoever because we get the same wood type and these ones just work with the farm a little bit better but we can also collect red mushrooms brown mushrooms not the blocks sadly just the actual mushrooms themselves but we can also get warped and crimson stem as well all we have to do is swap out this block here but the way this works is quite simple it's with magic you liar! You know me and redstone. But what I do know is it has a couple of different settings because when you're putting things like the warped fungus or the brown mushrooms and jungle trees, I think, what we need to do is actually come here and flick this lever here. And what that will do is every other block, it will actually, or every other TNT, I should say, it will move it over by a block and it just helps to get rid of more of the tree. But we only need to flick that lever if we're doing jungle or the giant fungus things or brown mushrooms and when we do those three things we also need to flip this lever up as well because that changes the timings so they sort of explode at different heights so to run the farm i won't turn it on just yet i'll do that in a moment i'll explain things first but to run the farm what we do is we stand up against this chain here and we have what do we do so if we put spruce in our off hand and bone meal in our main hand let's just grab some from here we can just stand here hold right click and that will grow the trees and basically that's all we do when the tnt explodes everything gets collected goes underneath there and it actually comes up a water tube here and this bubble vater what it does is you're supposed to make sure that your inventory is full of all the things you don't want like that for example and then any saplings will go directly into my offhand, just picked up through the carpet and everything else just goes into storage over here although we are actually going to change the way things are stored but for now this will be fine and we've also added a couple of the upgrades which are these two machines here and these just keep us fully supplied so if we turn this on this will start spitting out bone meal and we can't currently pick that up but as soon as we are full this pressure plate here will turn it off but when we can pick it up it will just continue to spit out and that keeps us full on bone meal as well and this side does exactly the same thing but for the fungus so with that being said i think we're about ready to turn the farm on so let's do that and watch it blow up this tree look at that perfect so if we just stand here and do this as you can see, my saplings and bone meal are refilling as we go, which keeps us fully stocked the whole time we're here. And everything is getting collected down here in these chests. And look at that, we're getting a whole bunch of spruce already. The important thing to remember, though, is I must turn it off before I leave the area. Because if I leave this on when I leave the area, then I think bad things happen. And we don't want bad things to happen. So now we know the farm works. The question is... How do we hide a farm like this? So we have hidden an ENX04 farm before that we were a bit stumped with at first, which was our Guardian farm. In fact, you're probably seeing that on screen now. And I reckon we can hide this one as well because this is a construction site and what is tall and thin and that kind of a shape is clearly going to have to be a crane of some kind. And I reckon we can probably pull it off. Although that's, that's going to be quite awkward with those bits there. Let's see what we can do. So this thing is going to need to be a lot taller than it currently is. Because I don't think there's any way I can kind of fit that inside the arm of a crane. It's just too tall. There's about 10 blocks in height there. And that's going to make it a really weird stumpy little crane. 
So that means this is going to have to be the cargo inside something that the crane is carrying. And that means this thing has got to be massive. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. Well, I think it needs to be about that big, which is which is really, really quite big. But then if we're standing down here on the road, kind of with everything else, I think scale wise, it is actually OK. The only issue we've got is that the thing it's holding is actually really close to the beam here. But I mean, planes do that, though. They move stuff in and out, right? I'm sure it'd be fine. But what I need to do now is start trying to figure out the details. So this whole top bar here, we need to put a counterweight on the back. We need to have ropes that connect to whatever we build here, which, I mean, we could just do shipping containers again. I think that's probably going to work quite well. And we need to, of course, put some support and some base at the bottom here, as well as make it all look cool. And then, of course, we need to find a way to hide this as well. That's going to be interesting. So we're making some progress down the bottom here. I've managed to work out the sort of shape of the stand here. I haven't actually pushed it out into this area here because I think I have an idea for this, but we'll come back to that later. However, the rest of it, I've just got these little platforms that go up. I think they work quite well. And if we take to the air, we can see they've got all the bars around them and so on as well. However, we have a glaring problem, and that is a lack of a control cab. And that's what I think we're going to put on this side here. Let's see if we can work something out for that. It's probably going to be fairly similar to one of these, I guess. Got the cab in place, and I think that's working quite well. And it is actually fully accessible as well, because you can, of course, climb up the scaffolding that goes up the center of the tower. And then when we get to the top here, we have a button, which enables us to get straight into the cabin. We've got all the controls as expected as well. And to be honest, we've got quite a good view as well. So once the city's built up, this will be a lovely viewpoint. But now we need to sort out this top area here. And I think I've got an idea of how we can do this. We're going to be utilizing a bit more scaffolding, I think. I think I've got the top section done. We just need to get in all of the cabling. And of course, we need to hide these things down here. And then, of course, we need to add some texture as well and hide the bottom tray. But I think next up, I'm probably going to see if we can hide these. I feel like that's probably the next best thing to do. And I think shipping containers is going to be the way to go. But we're not going to make them green this time. We're definitely going to mix that up. Well, the containers are done. And I've also managed to get all of the chains in. So everything sort of has the pulley system. And I've done a little bit of texturing on the yellow tower itself. And with that, I think the crane itself is actually done. But in classic Beardstone fashion, I also got a little bit carried away with the building. And I've kind of marked out the rest of the construction zone. Because we're going to be having a building or at least a series of buildings being built over here. This is all going to be a construction site because there's quite a few farms that we want to hide in this area but i've also managed to sort out the collection system here and we've just got a big pile of dirt at the bottom of the crane and to make that make a little bit more sense i think we're gonna to have to add like a dump truck or something as if it's dumping off the dirt over here luckily we don't have site safety inspections but i'm well chuffed with how that crane has come out the question is does it still work hopefully it does i've moved all the levers they're still here and they're kind of hidden i've put up some signs so i know what's what hopefully the TNT will still come through just fine. And hopefully it won't block this dirt either. Okay, that's looking good. I think I think we're good. That's quite possibly the strangest disguise I've ever put on a farm. But even now, we're still not completely done because there's one more problem to solve. And that, of course, is the storage, which currently is being piped out and it just basically comes up here. So anything that goes into the pool over here, for example, some coarse dirt, it'll follow the route. It will pass off any saplings and so on how it should. But then it's all going to arrive over here. And that means... We need to put some storage over this side. And I think something like this is going to work an absolute treat. Look at this. So we've brought another one of the generators over, of course, because we are going to need lighting over here. And we've got a big empty storage container here because I think at some point in future, what I might do is actually have it so it automatically bone mills certain items that come out of the dropping thing. So we'll just put them through that, sort some stuff out and only get the drops we want over here. But this is the main storage container. So it's, well, it's an orange one this time. It's different. And that one's gray. See, look, we're mixing it up a little bit. But this is literally just a wall of chests. And as you can see, I've been running the farm a little bit just to make sure everything's working fine. And, well, I'm happy to say it is. And this area is actually starting to look pretty cool now. Well, this corner of the area, I should say. But with the big crane and the storage, this farm is now complete. But there's one more thing I want to do because we've got this big pile of dirt here and I've just destroyed some grass, but don't worry about that. But we've got this great big pile of dirt and I think it makes sense to have some kind of a dump truck over here, kind of working with it, I guess. And there we go. We have a dump truck, kind of. The dump truck's really hard to do, it turns out. But I think that looks pretty good. It ties in nicely. We've got some little tracks of where it's driving about as well, but I don't want to go too much over this way because, as I say, I do have plans for over there. Or Well, I say plans. They're very loose plans. But I think we are actually done. Look at that thing. 
wonderful. And the best thing about it is, it's a working tree farm, and I couldn't be happier. Sadly, that's what we've got time for. I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye now.